Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called This May I Ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of angel and the meaning of destiny is to make firm established. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now in a moment I will introduce you to my wonderful guest Cara Melendi. But before that I would like to say thank you for watching this show live at a later date as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform their present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, meditation, angel cards, and hypnosis to help you get clear on your destiny. And I've also created a transformational journey that will help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guest, like today's guest, Cara Melendi, who will be imparting her wisdom about how working with astrology and cosmic energy can help you master manifestation. Now, Cara is a goddess, mentor and astrologer guiding light workers and spiritual entrepreneurs to connect with their inner goddess, awaken to their spiritual gifts and co-create magic with the universe. She draws on a unique combination of astrology, EFT, Akashic records and manifestation secrets to help her clients create a large impact in the world while creating financial abundance along the way. She is passionate about helping women embrace their inner goddess and use divine feminine energy to create massive shifts in their life and business. Cara has a master's in psychology, marketing training, energy psychology training, and is certified in the shake records. She's on a mission to raise the vibration of the planet by spreading love and light. With testimonials such as Cara is an incredibly intuitive guide and luminescent spirit, she holds deep knowledge of both traditional psychology and esoteric topics such as astrology. And working with Cara Melendi has been beyond rewarding in mind, body and spirit. She has helped me shift both my career and personal life to their highest potential. So you can see how she's helping women like yourselves. So without further delay, hello, Cara, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Good. Thank you, Ray. It's great to be here. And it's always fun to hear your bio. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's always like you. I think, oh, really? Did I? Oh, that, that's, that's <laughs> I know. Testimonials. Fun. <laughs> so thank you for having me. It's great to yeah, I, I, I love I love testimonials. So <laughs> before we get into this fascinating conversation, then I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Cara and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. We'll try to say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments live once the show is finished. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to it so you can get updates on our rec all my recordings. So, Cara, why don't you tell us more about yourself and how working with astrology and cosmic energy can help master, help you master manifestation? Sure. Yes. So I am an astrologer, also certified in the Akashic Records. I actually have a background in psychology. So I worked as a psychotherapist for years before diving into uh, astrology and the records and more of the spiritual side of things. Although even as a kid, I was very connected spiritually. Like, And when I was a child, it more took the form of religion, I think, because that's what was available for me at that time. And at the same time, I always had this desire to help other people to really give back and just going through some challenges in my own life it led me to want to help heal myself and better understand people and that's what kind of led to the psychology route but I think now that I probably would have chosen like if astrologer was an option back then or like spiritual guide I probably would have chose that but <laughs> <laughs> more of an option now for people but at the time it didn't really feel like it but I I enjoyed my time working as a psychotherapist and I enjoy going down that path as well and that was kind of the direction of my business for a long time it was more mainstream counseling more mainstream coaching and mm -hmm. 
it was actually after, and I, we kind of touched on this a little bit before the show started, but it was after an Akashic reading that I had myself that everything kind of shifted in my business and it really awakened some of that spirituality that's always been within me and my, my business just kind of organically after that completely shifted. And I started tapping into more of the intuitive side of things and bringing forth my love of astrology that I've always used in my own life and more kind of behind the scenes. And I had this calling to integrate it more and more into my business and to do more work with the divine feminine and the goddess energy. And that's, yeah, kind of where it took off and felt more aligned with my soul because I always knew that I wanted to help people. I had a message to share and I really wanted to empower, to inspire, to uplift and just the knowing that my soul chose to be here at this time. And it was through having that reading in the, the Akashic Records that it really kind of shifted for me and brought forward kind of that love of astrology and the records. And yeah, that's that's what I love to share with people today and, and how they can really use that energy in their manifesting, right? How they can work with cosmic energy to help guide them throughout their life because it's sometimes it can feel lonely on our journey, but it doesn't mm. have to, right? It doesn't have to. And when we connect into this cosmic energy, right, whether it's through astrology, through studying the moon phases, it just, it opens up so many doors in our life to realizing, wow, I do have support from my angels. I do have support from my guides, right? I'm not alone in this. And that just changes everything. That realization that there's something so much bigger than just us and us being in our physical body that's going on. And when we can be an open channel for that, it's truly amazing what can come through and unfold in our life. Yeah, and it is kind of like um, you know when when you think when you think of astrology, you you kind of like think of the um, you know the online astrology or um, magazines that go um, you know Virgo this verbalize etc. Which are really general yeah. um, to, to to people. So um, I mean, obviously the general ones are are for general. But how can, if you were to have personal astrology, how much more can that actually tell you about yourself? Mm, yeah, so much more. I always see like the write-ups in the magazines or even just the little weekly write-ups on our sun sign. They're fun. And that's all they're meant to be, right? It's, it's just a fun and very small glimpse of what's going on. Because in addition to your sun sign, which is your zodiac sign. So when people say I'm a Scorpio, Virgo, Cancer, that's what they're referring to, right? Is their sun sign. But there's so much more to it. We have a moon sign. We have a rising sign. We have planets in each of the different signs in each of the different houses and it all governs different aspects of our personality even deeper than personality traits like by looking at your birth chart and studying your birth chart you definitely get a glimpse into your innate gifts your intuitive powers what comes natural to you you can also have a glimpse into your life purpose and life path as well as past lifetimes too which is really cool so you can get a glimpse into some of the things that come natural for you some of the talents that you've mastered, some of the shadows that you're holding on to. So it goes so much deeper than just our zodiac sign or those fun write-ups, right? When you really dive in and know your chart. And that's what I see as like our divine soul blueprint is our birth chart. Because I believe our soul, when we came into this body, we knew that there was certain life lessons that we wanted to master and that there was gifts that we needed to help us on our life path. And our birth chart really points to that. So when we learn to harness that and work with that, it's like we're in flow with our energy signature, which is really powerful. So I love that you asked that because I think so much more there if, if you choose to dive into it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, when you, when you, were, when you were a child, did you, um, did you, did you look at the stars? Did you have a telescope, um, the moon and, and stuff, or was it just in, in the sky? Yeah. Oh, I was always kind of drawn to the stars and the moon, especially. And I'd love to share with some of your viewers, maybe more about the moon sign and they can have that hmm. if they don't know, um, you know, their charts, then yeah. 
will receive lots of powerful guidance from this, but I was drawn to the stars. I always felt a really strong connection to the moon. And that's actually what got me diving in deeper to astrology was when I started learning about my moon sign. Because the moon is like what's hidden under the surface. It's our intuitive response to things. It's our emotional response. It actually shows a lot about what we need in relationships as well. And it just, it's such a big picture, right? Like it, it kind of makes more sense in helping you understand yourself and what you need. So even um, like knowing your moon sign, but also just working with the moon phases in your manifesting is a beautiful way to connect with cosmic energy. And we're just coming out of a new moon on June 3rd. So maybe some people will be watching this month, months later, which is a little different, but we have a new moon every month. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're just coming out of that new moon energy, the new moon in Gemini, which really was just like a boost of energy, a new beginning, a fresh start. And every new moon is that opportunity from the universe to begin again, to start again. So if you're looking at, you know, how can I begin to manifest with astrology, starting with the lunar cycles is a beautiful place where you can really start with the new moon and set your intentions and see that as a new beginning, right? And that's a time where some people will do rituals as well, where you can like charge your crystals outside or you can pull some oracle cards and just kind of work with that energy to, to help you, right? And to help support you in that new beginning. So yeah, the new moon is great for that. And then the couple weeks following the new moon is when the moon is in the waxing phase. And that's when we can start to take our intentions that we created at the new moon and begin to put them into practice. Okay. So we're going to take inspired action, right? And that's also when we have to be aware of any of the limiting beliefs or doubts that come in and continue to reconnect with what our passion is, right? Continue to set those intentions. And the full moon is, and many people know about the full moon right like we hear yeah. the full moon where like emotions are high if people have kids they're like they're not sleeping they're more hyper <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just like an amplifier of what's going on within us so the full moon is that time to celebrate as well as that time to release what isn't working so you can go back and revisit those intentions set at the new moon and take a look at what do I need to release and let go of in my life so I can realign with those intentions right what it what like what energy do I need to clear what thought patterns do I need to change to realign and then following the full moon it goes into the waning phase and that's when we're building up to the new moon again and that's a good time to like declutter finish up projects and even take some time as we get closer to the new moon to really go within again and really reflect on okay what do I now want to create where what is my intuition telling me and just getting back to reconnecting with ourselves so it's this really powerful cycle that can like take our manifesting to a new level by honoring those different phases of you know getting clear on what we want aligning the energy taking the action doing the releasing and taking time to rest and recharge because sometimes we think we always have to be in action mode right like we always have yeah. to be fun. Um, and I know that can be me <laughs> <laughs> um, and many women right when we're ambitious and we have lots we want to share with the world or just in today's society where we feel like it's lazy to not always be doing something or there's guilt yes. about that but it's actually so key to recharge our energy and replenish yeah, because, I mean, it's interesting you um, touched on the waxing and the waning moon because mm -hmm. I think when you, um, if, if you Google or go on YouTube or people talk, you know, set your intentions on the new moon, um, you know, release stuff on the um, full moon, but nobody, but you kind of like forget the in-between yeah. in parts. <laughs> Right. Well, and I actually have a free gift on my site, um, if we want to share that later too, but just yeah. like goddesses.com and I have a gift where I go over I even break it down into the eight different phases but the four is like the main but yeah there's eight different phases and I share rituals that you can do for each what's happening in terms of the astrology at each point and super powerful for anyone that wants to dive more into that I find a lot of women are interested in learning more and like oh how can I do that it's kind of fascinating right to like work in these different phases and and honor that so yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad. So yeah, I'm glad you brought up about the um, the different phases. In fact, there's actually eight phases as well. You know that that's something that um, that, that people can get into. So the uh, um, Shake Records, 
Mm. Um, how do they work with astrology? Mm. So it's different, but yet pointing to the same energy. So astrology, right? We're looking at the planets, we're looking at the energy and the different signs and how that kind of plays out uniquely for each person within their energy field. Now with the Akashic Records, it's tapping into like the unique journey of your soul, your unique life path. So it's also tapping into your energy signature, but it's kind of a different way to do that. So just like with astrology, we're tapping into your birth chart, which is your soul blueprint through journey and through the Akashic Akashic records, you can also connect in to your soul blueprint. So they're both looking at the same energy, but just in slightly different ways. So what I love to do with people, um, I don't always combine them, but sometimes I do. And some people really love to have them combined is if I'm doing an astrology reading and I'm looking at their chart or I'm looking at the transits, which are what's happening in the cosmos today and how that's like affecting you or affecting your birth chart, opening the records before I do that and just receiving more guidance from that space. So it flows together. It kind of, I find for me in my practice anyway, it takes the astrology to a new level because then I'm receiving messages from the angels, from my guides, from my higher self that just helps me even more deeply connect to the energy of the chart and intuitively understand as well how they're working with the energy of their birth chart and what they need to go to the next level in their life. So it's really powerful. But I guess at the core, what it does is it both points to that energy signature that we have and helping us better understand that. Yeah. So for anyone that, that doesn't know, um, give us a, a quick idea um, of what the, um, uh, I can never, I see, I always have difficulty saying it. I know how to spell it. Brackets, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> Um, yes, so the Akashic Records is this energetic space that does contain our unique journey of the soul. So as we go through different lifetimes, we collect different knowledge, collect different wisdom that kind of stays with us in a certain way, right? It's like it stays with us. You can also see it as an energetic library that you enter and you kind of pull a book off the shelf and that's your unique life path and journey. That's it's different, but that's the way our mind does <laughs> understand it, right? It's like, oh, there was this past lifetime. And in the space of the records, all time is converging in the now. So it's like infinite possibilities in the present moment. So yes, we have past lives. And in the records, you can also jump to like, a future possibility or a future lifetime, because it's all happening in the now, which is very powerful. So it's also in addition to like kind of connecting into the wisdom of your soul and your unique journey. It's also a way of tapping into collective consciousness too, because in many ways, I mean, at the core, we are all one, right? In the sense, we're all part of the source energy. We're all part of the divine. But as we come into these bodies, we take on different identities and different personalities as we go through this life. But at the core, it's that oneness. So we also can tap into the wisdom of the collective in the space. So it really helps us kind of rise above like our limitations, our belief patterns, and tap into what is true on a soul level. So it's very very healing just spending time in that space I find another thing too I mean you can also connect into your angels like of course we're on this show you love to work with the angels it's a you don't have to be enter through the Akashic Records to work with angels of course not but you, that's also a beautiful thing you can do in that space is connect into your angels or loved ones who have passed on will sometimes come through for messages for people as well um, the ascendant masters the goddesses so it, it's a a very powerful place and what's really neat about the records too is it's not only people that have like their records but different locations have their own records as well or crystal okay. for any of the crystal lovers crystals actually have their own records too because it's just basically their journey right the energy they yeah. hold it's really fascinating yeah Oh, yeah, the, the the crystals one sounds um, yeah. So I, I know I know I know a few crystal people, and so it's like mm, okay. I wonder if they know that one about the records. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so cool. It's part of um, my training when I was getting certified in the records. One of the um, exercises we did was opening the records for a crystal. So that was a really powerful experience, yeah, because I know people who love working with crystals, like they sense the energy that they have, right? Like they sense the yeah. So Yeah, just being in the records can give you a better understanding of how that crystal 
their their energy but also how it can work with you like the purpose it's serving in your life because i think we all have crystals that we're really drawn to as well mm. so it can be a message there for us as well and like how we can work with that in our manifesting or just serving us on our life path yeah now now here's here's, here's something i just thought of um because to go into the re um to go into the record you need the permission of the person yes so how would you go into the records of the crystals mm. how do they give their permission and also can you do on animals do animals have their own records <laughs> yes i just thought of that when you're saying the crystals so yes you want of course you wouldn't want to enter someone's records without their permission um with crystals or with animals since they can't like verbally give that permission you more feel into the energy of it so ask do I have this permission to explore? And if it's more of a contractive or a no, then that's a no. Uh, but if it's expansive, yes, then then you can move forward. And mostly with crystals, I, I mean, I guess it could be more closed off. Um, with animals, sometimes for sure, you can feel that, especially with like cats. <laughs> <laughs> and we respect that. But usually, um, yeah, and we just have to kind of trust that. You'll, you'll get a feel when you're used to connecting to that energy if it's like, yes, go ahead, open up, or if it's no. And I always think like the records are, um, it's in our highest and best good. Like it's a space of non-judgment and unconditional love. So even um, in doing readings with people and like having their permission, if there's something that they're not ready to hear or receive, I believe it's not going to come through anyway, right? It's like, it's what's gonna come through is always going to be what that person is ready to receive at that time and what is in their highest and best good to receive. So I almost feel like there's a protection already built in in that space because it is so so loving, right? That sometimes yeah. there will be certain things that just wouldn't come through or wouldn't have access to because on some level, the person may not be ready to receive it. and sometimes even with questions someone may be asking as well right and we probably all had this experience maybe in different readings too it's like some of the information isn't coming through as clearly and and sometimes it's that person is it fully ready to receive or not at that time but it will may come through in another way all right okay i mean if you are watching this you know then please do say hello and and comment so so that we do so that we know you are you are here as so I can see we've got a couple of people watching so it would be nice to know who you are so we can please don't be shy um, <laughs> so um so so with um the manifesting um I mean do you use EFT in that as well or do you just really um use the um, records and astrology yeah, many different things when it comes with, to manifesting. So I'm multi-passionate for sure. Um, always love working with astrology and the records. Like they're the two things I'll always work with. But I have a lot of energy techniques that I'll draw on as well. And EFT is my favorite. So EFT or some people may know it more as tapping. And that's a beautiful way to clear your energy because we, you know, we hold emotions in our body. We hold emotions in our energy field. And it's something we desire to call in is not always in alignment with our energy of course we want to release that or clear that or understand why a part of us may be resisting it or not calling it in so EFT is a beautiful way to kind of work through that and shift your energy so I'll definitely draw an EFT for sure I mean there's clearings that I'll do with people in the space of the records if they're feeling blocked, which is always very powerful. Um, and you don't have to do EFT to clear that. Again, there's all these beautiful tools. Great to have. <laughs> and um, EFT, though, is one of my favorites. And it's one that I use on myself, too. Like, it's amazing the shifts that can happen with EFT when you come up against a block. So even that works with, like, astrology and the records, too, right? Because if you become aware of something that you're manifesting or if there's a block to that, EFT is a way just to dig in a little bit deeper and shift your mindset and energy around it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, and Katrina says hello, and she's getting the wave. Hello, Katrina. Hi, Katrina. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for, uh, for, 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 tu for, tu for tuning in um, uh, and now where we're talking about um, the various ways of manifesting with the shake records, kind of like I said it, and the astrology and possibly a little bit of BFT. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
and that so how so if someone um came to see you i mean would you would they say oh i want to um go into the records or would they say i want to go into astrology or would you say actually let me see what comes up um to which one we're going to or whether we're going to be using both yeah oh yeah it's very much just depends like some some people usually feel drawn to one or the other or all so i do have astrology readings and many people will come in and they just want to look at their unique birth chart their divine soul blueprint and learn how to really work with that energy or they feel like they're in a time where they're feeling stuck overwhelmed or at a time of transition and astrology can really help with that too because i can see what's going on in the cosmos right now and how it's activating your chart and how you can really work with that energy right so an understanding of how to process that lesson when that's probably going to shift for you and answer any questions you have right around like the finances relationships health it's all in the chart um, and then some people are more drawn to the records so I would absolutely just leave that up to the person and trust that they know what's going to be in the highest and best good to them and usually if you're drawn to something it's for a reason and there's information there. And with the records, or Akashic records, it's really powerful for doing clearing and healing work. Cause I love to open that space and just being in the space of the records adds, there's an element of healing that will always occur no matter what, just from spending time in that space, right? So I love to use that if people know that they're coming up against resistance or blocks that they wanna shift and just opening the records and guiding them through clearings and activations in that space. Um, and then the same with EFT, some people just prefer EFT as a way to shift the energy. So it's very much just preference. Um, for my clients that I would work more long-term one-on-one with, we we draw on all of it at some point. <laughs> yeah. Referring back to their chart, seeing what's going on, entering the records whenever they want more guidance and clarity or doing tapping when they feel stuck. So it is a preference. It can be one of those things or all combined, just depending on what that person is wanting or needing at their journey or what level of work we're doing together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's the way I, I work as well. You know, you know, someone will come for a particular thing, but if it's the long term, then we just go with the flow, whatever the angels or guidance comes in as to what, you know, what we should be working with or um, that particular day or not a day. And quite mm -hmm. often I'm, I am guided because by, by my clients because they kind of like, well, actually, I'd rather have some healing today or what that future future is so 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 they they tend to know when they come in to even if they don't realize that they know it when when they walk in and they come and see you they they kind of like instinctively know so so it's kind of like even if they say you know i've got no intuition no anything like that when they come in you can actually go actually you chose what you were going to do today you use an instinct to do it Yes. Oh, it's so true. And I love that about intuition because I think it's so true. It's like we all have intuition and we all know that's never a question. Now, some of us may be more in tune to it than other people, right? And, and yeah. I think a lot of times it's just having the courage to say yes to our intuition and to trust our intuition, right? Um, and I know another question I get asked a lot around the intuition, and I get that because that comes up in my life too. I think it comes up for everyone. It's like, when is it fear or when is it intuition, right? Yeah. And how do we know the difference? And I, it, it's a very different feel. And I think it's just learning to practice, right? Like our intuition always feels very expansive. It's just kind of an inner knowing before we have the chance to overanalyze or second guess. And fear is going to feel contractive or just coming from a space of fear, like don't do that or stay away mm -hmm. from right very fearful so yeah it's intuition so powerful right like we come in knowing what we want and need whether it's for a reading or in our life that doesn't mean that we then don't seek out the help of people around us or the resources but being connected to our intuition can even guide us in that process knowing who to reach out to knowing what kind of strategy or healing modality to try when we're really in tune we just know what's going to be best for us yeah and, and, I, th and I think sometimes that the people um Forget they go no i've got no intuition they they close off where it could be actually i came and stuff with intuition i might not be using it but mm -hmm. it's there and if i'm open to it and just look out for what's going on around and all the synchronicities the people i meet etc then it actually kicks it actually kicks in and before long you're kind of like going oh actually i knew that <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, I'm just coming back to the astrology side of it too. I actually did a video about this last night on um, Mercury, the communication planet recently moved into the sign of cancer and that's really enhancing our intuitive gifts for all of us because Mercury is the messenger, it's the way we communicate and in the sign of cancer, it's very intuitive. It's seen beyond the words to like that gut instinct, the body language and so for all of us right now, we're really kind of feeling into that a little bit deeper of how can I be more intuitive in my communication or intuitive in the decisions that I'm making because I find with intuition too it doesn't always seem like the logical thing to do mm. sometimes intuition will go against what feels logical and that's what can hold us up a lot too because like oh I have this feeling but it doesn't make sense completely <laughs> so mercury and cancer right now we're kind of we're feeling into how do I trust that a little bit more how do I rely on that a little bit more so it's really cool and it's a nice balance to Gemini season which is very much in the space of the mind and the intellect to kind of balance that out with listening to our heart as well because of course we need both so it's like how do I integrate both and what does that integration look like for me <laughs> <laughs> so so um, I mean do you sort of like um work your your day to day um what you're going to be doing um you know who you're going to be speaking to do you do you work everything around the astrology and and the records every day or do you just kind of like every now and again and or just leave it up to whatever happens that day Sure. Yeah. Well, I'm always checking in with astrology. Like I actually on my Instagram page, I do daily cosmic guidance often on my Facebook page too. I'll update it as well. So I'm always aware of the shifts that are happening. Um, or for my membership site, they do, we, I do weekly guidance for them. So I'm always connected into the cosmos, but the way I work with it is I believe it's always working to support us. So I'm not someone that works with astrology in a way like it's a warning or it's holding me back from what I can't do. It's more the belief and the knowing that the universe is always working to support me. The universe always has my back. So I look at it that way, right? So I definitely take a look at the energy and how I can use it in its highest expression because the neat thing with astrology too even just knowing our basic like zodiac sign, there's the shadow of that or there's the highest form of expression. So we can be stuck in some of the difficulties of that sign or we can step into all that we're meant to be through that energy. And I think it's the same day to day with the cosmos. We can see what's going on and we can get stuck in the shadow of that energy or we can evolve into the highest expression of what is there. So, it, and of course that's a journey because <laughs> we're human, we're not perfect, but I always love to look at it well, some of us are practically perfect but. <laughs> <Close enough. laughs> but it's a journey right so I'm like okay how can I make the most of this today um and I find even people that don't know the astrology but they're intuitive like I'm sure all of your viewers or people that would be drawn to you are very sensitive to energy and very intuitive they'll often sense the cosmic shifts even without knowing the astrology mm -hmm. Like, oh, I just knew a full moon was coming, right? They're like, I was feeling more emotional. Everything felt more intense. Or they feel when there's like a heaviness to the energy. Because it's the thing with astrology, it's in the cosmos. It's not something just outside of it. It happens within us because we're all connected. So it's like what's happening outside is going on within too. So it's really, I love to work with it in that way, right? And that's where the manifesting comes in. Like, okay, how can I process these energies? How can I make the most of them? Where are the lessons too? Where am I being triggered? Where is it difficult? And what is that saying about some old patterns that need to be released? So it's very powerful when you can see it that way. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it, it's kind of like, yeah, in a new way of sort of like of, of, of seeing, oh, rather than just the, um, you know, oh, this is what my sun sign is saying. Um, this week or, or whatever it's kind of like okay let's tap in a little bit more into into me and my connection with with the universe and everything um that, that's going on around yeah oh it's so much so much deeper than our sun sign yeah I like yeah. anybody who's just starting with astrology and wants to go deeper what i would say is know your sun sign your zodiac which pretty much everybody knows right because yeah pretty much common common for many but the next step after that would really be to study your moon sign and then after that you're rising and just knowing those pieces alone of course there's so much more I don't mean to minimize it from a zodiac sign to then your moon <laughs> 
because it's so, so much bigger than that. But just if you're starting out and you're like, what is the next step? That is the next step. Or looking at the moon phases. So again, the free gift on my website, spiritualgoddesses.com. If you want to start manifesting with the lunar cycles, there's definitely ways where you can kind of ease into it and start going a little deeper if you feel that calling. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's definitely worth um, going to have a look at that because it's not just um, the new moon and the full moon. It's, no. um, it's, it's, it's all the um, the waxing, the waning, and then you've got Gibbon. You've got, you've got so many, haven't you? <laughs> So that'll go over all of it in a really fun way that, that makes it fun. And I never think we want to be like rigid about it, right? Or again, use it in a way that restricts us. Have fun with it, expansive. I mean, the moon is representative of the goddess energy, the divine feminine. So it's meant to be flowy. It's meant to be fun. So look at it from that standpoint. <laughs> so so where did the goddess um, aspect come from? Has that always been there? Or did that come about when, when you started working with the records and, astro and astrology? Oh, that's a good question. That did come about a little bit later. Like I'm sure I always kind of felt that connection in different ways to the goddess, but I never really dove into it until it was around the time, actually, that's so interesting, of uh, the Akashic Record reading that initially took my business in more of that spiritual direction. Yeah, it was that time that the goddess started coming through as well. So yeah, isn't that cool how that works? <laughs> it is, yeah. So I mean, do you, do you work with any particular goddesses or do you just um, embody them all or is it just organic? Yeah, so I really like helping people awaken their goddess power within them. But I will work, I will call on different goddesses at different times because um, I can even work with astrology as well. It's like the energy of the different zodiac signs can actually be related to the different goddess archetypes too, which is really cool. So I do a little bit of both, right? You can get to know the different goddesses, call on their energy. And again, how I see that too is not just the goddess outside of us. It's like that goddess energy or the trait that a different goddess embodies is actually traits that are within us. So usually if we're drawn to a different goddess or we keep seeing their name come up, there's probably information there that we're meant to dive into that something it's going to unlock something within us, like a deeper understanding of those traits that are trying to be expressed. So it's very cool. Yeah, although you do have to have lots of respect with goddesses. Um, as as um, I found I found out in India recent, recently, um, there's a shrine there to Kali, and I want and I wanted to go and pay my I wanted to go and pay my respects, and I had to argue with the guide. It's sort of like he's trying to take us around this temple really quickly, and it's like, no, I want to, I want to go. Um, so I've got some money out, you know, to give us a thank you, and gone in loads and loads of people, like you know. Um, um, be given the the, um, the the red windy, you know, um, been blessed. Went to have my money over, got pushed to the side, so I couldn't actually give my money over to to thank. So I was kind of like, okay, I need to do something later to 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 thank Carly for the blessing. Mm. She didn't want to know. Bear in mind, Carly is quite a fierce, strong goddess. Yeah. She wasn't going to wait for that. Um, and I hope my mum's not watching this um, because. <laughs> Um, about half an hour later I was coming down some stone steps and how my foot managed to miss a step I don't know because I was watching where I was going and I've come tumbling down and I kind of like I don't want to be hitting my head and I've kind of like landed not too badly um and so I'm thinking oh okay I survived that but then someone oh your elbow's bleeding and of course my blood was on the steps so it's like Harley's just got her, just got her, her thanks for me. She took my blood. <laughs> oh my goodness, Goddess Kali. That's funny you mentioned her because I've always actually been very drawn to Goddess Kali. And, and on the surface, she looks kind of like a scary goddess, right? Like she's not maybe like the typical beautiful goddess, but oh, she's powerful. I mm. love Goddess Kali. She is like the wild divine feminine, right? And I she find... Is come to us during times of transformation in our life too because she's that ultimate like transforming you know embracing the darkness and the light but going through kind of these rebirths in your life so I've always uh you know I find like different goddesses are probably it is I imagine the same with the angels different
different angels coming through at different times, different goddesses. Mm. And then there's some that always seem to be with us on our path or we feel that more strongly. And uh, for me, Goddess Kali has always seemed to be there ongoing. <laughs> Transformation. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she's definitely a very um path, definitely a very powerful um um lady. So now, as you know, I do guided meditations and angel card readings. So each week I'm going to ask my guests, what would you like? So, Cara, would you like a guided meditation or an angel card? Definitely an angel card. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, That's what I like. And I've got the cards here. Right in front of my hand. Awesome. I okay. love the card too. Is that like matching my backdrop, the purple? <laughs> <laughs> it is, yes. Um, whilst we're back to do the cards, um, Anna Frolic. Hello, you two beauties. Hello, Anna. Thank you oh, for yeah. dropping in and watching. And I hope you found this... Uh, so far in, insightful um, especially when we're talking about goddesses who may or may not come into into our life so <laughs> um, as people know and um, with the cards um, I do when I pull the cards I pull the cards for what we need to know for our highest good at this moment in time because although I work with um, the past with past life regression to me, healing the past helps you be present. And I want to work with the future. If you know your future, you're not worried about it, you can be in the present. So everything I do is for the present. So um, we'll just give a quick cleanse and bless. So what do Kara and everyone who's watching this live or the replay need to know for their highest good this moment in time? What does Kara and everyone who's watching this I particularly today need to open my eyes because I'm so I just come on. Okay, let's see what we come up with. We have got joy and delight. Open your heart to joy. Oh, I love that. Beautiful. And look at that card. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes very very beautiful mm. uh, which kind of like goes in with with what what we were talking about a bit earlier where you sort of like you know when you go into your heart but have some joy and fun and delight in the world sort of like connect back to your inner child you know to to the joy you had when you were a child when everything was kind of like exciting and and new so so don't be so serious about everything that's going on. Just take a little step back and go into that wonder and joy of childhood, um, you know, and the excitement and fun of, of being a child again. Does that make sense? Yes, I love that. And it's so aligned with the astrology now too in Gemini season. It's about embracing that inner child and embracing more fun and joy. So I love that that came <laughs> And just growing, like that's actually been an affirmation of mine lately too, like ease, joy, and flow, because I think we can expand through that as well, right? Sometimes we think it just has to be the challenges, and sure, that allows us to grow and step up, but joy can too. We need joy. And <laughs> throughout our work right our personal growth work I think we need to not always take it so serious so thank you for that beautiful card I love that uh, this the angels see they 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 they, they, choose, they, they 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 choose what cards we need to we need to know for our high for our highest good mm. and that so Cara before we um wrap up do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers mm. We touched on so much today. <laughs> I know. And there's so much more we can go into. I love that. Um, wow, let me see any final insights. Well, definitely for those who are interested in the astrology, check out the free gift on the moon phases. Um, because that actually really connects to all of it. It's like the moon, the astrology component, the goddess energy, the divine feminine, which the moon really embodies. So um, checking that out and just, yeah, I think just leading up on that card to embracing more joy and delight and fun in our life. Because when it comes to manifesting, that's what makes us magnetic. That's what helps us attract whatever we want is when we're in that energy of joy and fun and just knowing that that is something that comes from within us. So regardless of what's happening in your life right now, that joy can be a choice 
that comes from within and can really shift everything in your life. So thank you for having me on, Ray. This was fun. Oh, that's brilliant. And thank you, and thank you for, um, for 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 the wisdom and insights you've 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 actually given us. Um, you know, it, it's it's something that that myself and others can sort of like think about. Um, you know, going going forward um, with with manif- you know trying to manifest things um, in our lives. So I hope everyone um, that you've enjoyed this uh, show and you found it insightful and that the words of wisdom Kara has given you will help you further on your journey. So Kara, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Well, they're welcome to reach out right on Facebook or check out my website, spiritualgoddesses.com. And that's where they can grab their free gift and learn. I have astrology courses there, readings, all sorts of good stuff, but definitely Get your free gift on the moon phases if that's speaking to you. So spiritualgoddesses.com. And yeah, reach out on Facebook, Kara Melendi. I'd love to connect. <laughs> yeah, and I'll put those details in the comments so um, uh, people can just click on the links to actually to actually, to actually go to them. So everyone, thank you so much for watching and thank you, Kara, for being on the show. It's been brilliant having you. Thank you. And I would like to invite um, you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And if you have reached crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Reach out and connect with me so that we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute session via Skype or Messenger to find out more about each other and how I can help you take charge of your destiny. And next week, I will see you um, on Wednesday, the 12th of June, 8 p.m., where my guest will be Christine Gold, who will be imparting her wisdom on how we all have gifts and how to expand and develop them all. So I'll see you all then. And again, Cara, thank you so much for being on the show. It's been wonderful having you. Oh, this was fun. Thank you. (laughs) See you all later. Bye.